I have a quest in life, which is to share nature, to showcase nature, and for everything that I put out there into the world, for the people who are lucky enough to be able to view my images, for them to know that, you know, that there's no trickery, there's no processing, there's no Photoshop, there's no boosting the saturation. I am fortunate enough to have seen nature at its very best in that moment in time, that split second. It's my quest to capture that split second in time of pure nature to deliver it to my audience, those who are fortunate enough to see my work. That's my quest, to share nature at its purest. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, oh God. I can already feel those likes, guys. I can already feel, feel it. Too. it. Yeah. I can really feel My it. phone's vibrating and I've not even shot the image. Seriously. As a master of landscape photography, I have a responsibility. And that is to do the scene justice, to do nature justice. So when I happen upon a scene, for example, I was recently in Patagonia and after hiking for many hours in the wilderness, navigating by compass and the sunlight only. I happened upon a lone tree, a lone tree that stood in a turquoise lake with a beautiful mountain backdrop. Right, pick this tree up, put it right in there, okay? Yeah, that's good, that's good, get the rock down, the rock, 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 rock! Now a lot of people would see that, perhaps, you know, if they went to the effort of, you know, searching these scenes out and listening to nature around them, which they don't, but I did, and I found this tree. And a lot of people would take their phone out and take a shot, or perhaps they'll take out their DSLR camera and take a photograph, not me, no. I speak to the scene. I communicate with the tree and with the mountain. And I, I spend hours and hours perfecting that composition because I, I have a responsibility to show the world these pieces of art within nature, created by nature, there for me to capture and for me to share with my audience who are lucky enough to be able to see these, um, these scenes out in the wilderness that, quite frankly, <laughs> these people otherwise would never get the chance to see. So, you know, actually, my audience and those who are lucky enough to see my work owe me quite a lot. Left, left, oh, no! Pick it up. Put it again. I'm trying to get a flip of shot. Do you know who I am? I need these images to go viral on Instagram and you two aren't helping. Before I met Tom, I didn't really care about nature. Who cares about stupid trees? But look at this. And he's really inspired me to go out and shoot and really appreciate what, what the earth has offered us. Yeah, I hated trees before I met Tom. Trees. He always like, trees. <laughs> Who even cares? Who like, cares? There was a forest fire here in Patagonia and I was like, good. Yeah. Thankfully. Who cares, tree. right? But because of Thomas Heaton, I'm now like, I've planted 17 trees this year alone. Yeah, what? I donated to Simon Baxter's tree fund. Oh, to wow. Meg's Can you link me? Yeah, I'll link you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cynical people will always hate Instagram. Me, I, I love Instagram. And uh, the image I captured of a beautiful tree in Patagonia is a classic example. You know, people may not believe that that tree is real, that that tree stood the test of time. But it's there for all to see. Forget it, move, move, move. It's not good, it's not good, it's the wrong tree. Get another tree, there's one over here. Come on. Get this one. If you guys want to become international photographer superstars, you're going to have to do better than this. Who's this? this Sony? Piece of well, when I was trekking through Patagonia, um, I was cold, I was tired, I was beat, I was beat down. And I knew what I wanted to find. I was looking for, I was looking for a sign of I was looking for something to cling on to because I was almost a broken man. It was windy, it was raining, I was struggling. And then I saw this single tree stood, emerged in the water. That tree has managed to hold on through everything that's been thrown at it. Fires, wind, rain, nature, snow. You know, that, that tree really inspired me to keep going because that tree has kept going. It's continued to grow and, and, and the roots, it's so firmly rooted to the ground, you know, and no other trees were, that tree survived. So that inspired me. And that was enough for me to stop and think about getting my camera out. Get it on. Get it to stay. 
you two are going to be Instagram superstars. Good job. Right, let's shoot this. <sighs> ah, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Just nature at its very best. Phenomenal. So to anybody looking to become a master of fine art, landscape, nature, outdoor photography, I would say, well, the first thing I would say is it's not, it's not something you can teach. You can't teach it. You either have it or you don't. I, know I would, I would uh, recommend that if somebody wants to pursue that line of photography, then they should pay to come on one of my workshops because, you know, I can show them the way. And I can, I can really help them immerse themselves out in nature. You know, they can spend hours and days and weeks with me in the wild. And if they can hack it, if they've got what it takes, and if they can communicate with nature and really get the message, you know, translate the message, speak the words that nature can't speak itself through the medium of photography. If they think they can do that, then I can certainly teach them how to become a master of landscape, fine art, outdoor nature photography. One more shot, focusing on the beautiful tree, the main subject. So that's the end, really. It's, uh, it's been an amazing day here in Patagonia. Really a lot of respect for the natural environment and finding these beautiful compositions. Yeah, I think let's go find some more trees. Cool, let's do it. Yeah. Okay.